Firstly, lay out the string lines to position your fence. String lines mark the outside of your fence posts and help set your fence posts okay. at a uniform height along the length of the fence line. Determine the exact location of your fence and set up a string line supported by pegs. Keep the string line taut and set at 50 millimeters above the ground. As a tip, place the pegs 500 millimeters beyond the corners of the fence so as not to obstruct the holes. Using the string line as a guide, mark the position of the holes at 2350 millimeter intervals from one corner. You will find a fence rail helpful to do this. Mark the ground with spray paint or flour or something similar. Remember to take note of gate positions. Dig the holes to the required depth. In our example, 600 millimeters. Holes can be either straight, wider at the bottom or wider at the top. As a tip, mark the post hole shovel at 600 millimeters to get the correct depth. We will now work through the steps for a level, a stepped, a raked, then a tapered fence. Where your fence is level, screw your fence posts together using SH10 16 by 16 screws in a color matching the post color. For a 1500 mm panel, you need a minimum of six screws. Mark the position starting 100 mm from the top. Screws should be placed at five equal spaces down the posts in an offset pattern. The last screw should be at least 100 mm above the ground. As a tip, make sure your bottom screw doesn't interfere with the rail. From the top of your post, measure down the post the intended panel height of your fence. In our case, 1500 millimeters. This mark is both the position of the bottom rail and 50 millimeters above the finished ground line. In our example, 550 millimeters of the post will be in the concrete. Repeat this for all your fence posts. As a tip, install the post caps on square posts for corners or gates before screwing to other fence posts. Place the first post in its hole. Fill the hole with wet concrete and firm in place. Use a spirit level to ensure the post is vertical. Check the top of the post is at the calculated height. As a tip, using drier concrete in the bottom of the hole beneath your posts will enable you to adjust the post to the correct fence height. Fill in the hole with a concrete mix and be sure to contour the top of the concrete so that water flows away from the post. Remove any splashed concrete that comes into contact with the posts or rails. Let's continue to install the remaining posts. Use two screws to install the bottom rails to your first post in line with the previous mark. Place your second screwed together post in the next hole and screw fix the rail to it in line with your mark. As a tip, you may find it easy to use a 50 millimeter block under the rail to hold the fence at the desired height until the concrete cures. Loosely fix your top rail with two screws so it is flush or just below the top of the post. This will help to keep your fence aligned. Then, fill your hole with concrete, ensuring the post is plumb in both directions. Repeat this process for the remaining posts and rails. Firstly, mark the bottom rail position on your posts as per a level fence. But do not screw the posts together yet as you will need to screw the posts together at each hole. Where the ground slopes, start at the high end. As a tip, 
To get an even step along the fence run, measure the fall over the length and divide by the number of steps to give you the same fall on each panel. Install the first post the same as you would a level fence. Then, screw in the bottom rail 50mm above the ground at the high end. Insert the post into the hole and loosely screw the rail to the post at the marked position. Raise the post until the bottom rail is level. Chock it up at this height. Tighten off the bottom rail screws. Loosely screw in the top rail as per a level fence. Place the next post in the hole and lower the post until the bottom rail mark is 50 millimeters above the ground and screw fix to the other post. And fill the hole with concrete, ensuring your post is plumb and in line with the string line. Repeat this process for the stepped fence line. Where the fence extends beyond the front of your house, these panels can be tapered over two panels to improve the aesthetics and reduce wind load on the fence. If the fence is tapered over the end two panels, a square post is not needed. Holes are dug out as before, however the fence height is halved at the last post. Full details of post lengths and top rail heights are set out in our installation guide. In our example, with a fence height of 1500 mm, the last post would be 750 mm high and the middle post of the tapered section 1125 mm. Stage 2 begins when the concrete is cured. Lay your infill sheets down on the grass to ensure they are oriented the same way and they lap correctly. The correct overlap will ensure a better finish to your fence. This is how a neater screen overlaps. This is how the smarter screen overlaps. Make sure that all the laps are facing the same way along the length of the run. This is how the mini screen overlaps. For raked and tapered fences, you will need to cut the infill sheets. Our installation guide provides information on cutting details. Using the table in the guide, cut the top of the infill sheets to suit your fence slope with tin snips, a metal cutting wheel, or a nibbler. We do not recommend using an abrasive cutting disc. As a tip, when installing the sheets on a tapered fence, insert the shorter sheets first, then slide along. Unscrew the top rail and install one sheet at a time into the bottom rail. Slide the first sheet into the post before installing the next sheet with the correct overlap. The infill sheets need to fit snugly into the rail, so at times they may be difficult to get in. Repeat this for all panels. As a tip, you may find it easier to get the sheets in if you put both the end sheets in, then the middle. Take your top rail and working from one end, insert the rail into a post and lower over the sheets. 
guiding the infill into the rail as you go. A rubber mallet can be used to assist by gently tapping the rail over the sheets. As a tip, loosely screwing in one end of the top rail will assist you in getting the rail down over the sheets. Ensure the top rail is flush with the top of your post or just below it. Screw the top rail to the post with two coloured screws, one screw per side, then tighten the other side. Repeat this process for all panels. Now take your post caps. Fit them onto the top of the double posts and screw down. The post caps can be cut in half with a sharp knife to cater for single posts. This completes the installation. If you have ordered a neater screen, smarter screen or mini screen plus fence then your post needs to be 300 millimeters longer. To carry through our example we want a finished height of 1500 millimeters. There is 300 millimeters for the lattice and 600 millimeter post footing so our post length will need to be 2100 and sheet length 1190. You will also need one extra rail and extra screws. Using our working example for a neater screen plus style fence, your fence post would extend 300 millimeters above the top rail, which now becomes your middle rail. The next step is to install the lattice. Roll your top rail over the top of the lattice. Make sure you have the lattice the correct way up. The flat return goes on the top of the middle rail and the triangle shaped end goes into the top rail. Then slide the lattice and rail into the posts. Gently tap the lattice top rail down until it is flush with the top of the post at both ends. Fix the post to the rail with two of the extra screws. Then fix the lattice to the top of the middle rail with the three screws. As a tip, using a piece of cardboard between the lattice and the screw gun will prevent scratching the lattice. Repeat for the remaining panels, then fit your post caps or ball caps. You have now completed your colour fence and are ready to install your gates. Hose the fence down to remove any swarf or dirt Make sure your bottom rails are free of any debris and water can run off through the drainage holes at the end. The colour fence system has a complete range of gate kits to suit most needs. These can be screwed together on site, allowing you to mix and match colours and to adjust the width of the gate on site to fit the width of the gate opening. The colour fence gate kit comes complete with the following items. Two styles, two rails, screws, two post caps. Optional extras to finish off the gate are gate locking accessories such as latch, hinges, drop bolt, infill sheets and two 65 by 65 SHS posts. Gate posts should be set out and installed making allowance for a 20mm clearance for single and extra wide gates or a 30mm clearance for double gates to allow for hinges and free opening of the gate. Lay out the infill sheets onto a flat surface taking care not to scratch the sheets. For extra wide gates overlap the sheets to form the required width. Using a pair of tin snips, make two cuts to each corner of the infill sheet to form notches. The corners of the infill sheets need to be notched 5 mm by 10 mm. If using the plus designs, that is with lattice, the top notches need to be made 10mm by 35mm. 
If you are installing a gate with lattice, then you will need to prepare the lattice. Using tin snips, you will need to remove a notch from the top flange of both ends of the lattice. With your marker, mark the position for the lattice clips on the styles. Measure the length of the infill sheet up from the inside of the bottom of the gate style, less 12 millimeters. In the case of our 1500 millimeter gate, it will be 1190 millimeters less 12 millimeters, which equals 1178 millimeters. Screw fix the lattice clips at this position. An edge cover strip needs to be attached to the infill sheet. With the infill sheets on a soft surface, fit the top and bottom rails to the infill sheets, taking care to avoid scratching either the rails or infill sheets. Slide the spigots of the styles into the top and bottom rails. Slide the styles hard against both ends of the rail and screw fix with the supplied screws, one at 20 millimeters in from the junction of each rail style. Now check the diagonals of the gate to ensure that it is square and adjust as necessary. For the gate to be square, the diagonal measurements of the gate must be the same. Once the gate is square, place an additional screw in each style rail connection 170 millimeters in from the style. Now turn the gate over and screw fix the rails to the styles as per the other side. As a tip, screwing two holes in the bottom rail will assist with drainage. If you have lattice, now insert the top of the lattice into the very top rail of the gate and rotate the bottom of the lattice to the center of the lower top rail. Screw fix it with three equally spaced screws to the middle rail. Cardboard between the drill and the lattice will protect the paintwork. Install the black plastic plugs into the top of the gate styles. Measure 200 millimeters up from the bottom of the gate and 150 millimeters down from the top of the gate and install the supplied hinges with screws supplied. Measure down from the top of your installed gate post 150 millimeters and mark. Carefully prop the gate to the closed position and screw fix the top hinge to the 150 millimeter mark with one screw only at this stage. Then align the bottom hinge on the post so that the gate style and gate post are parallel and place one screw in the bottom hinge. Test the action of the gate to ensure it swings well. Now place the additional three screws into each hinge and to the gate post. Next, affix the latch, handles and drop bolts in your required positions. It is important that you now clean off any swarf from the gate with a soft brush and water. And there it is. Enjoy the newfound privacy and security of the colour fence around your backyard. If you have an existing colour fence, you can convert these into plus type fences quite simply and at little cost. We have a lattice conversion kit which includes two 340mm posts, an extra rail, lattice and extra screws plus a ball cap to finish it all off. Start by removing the existing screws from the post and top rail junction of the existing fence. Then slide the 340mm post extensions down over the top of the existing post until the cutout meets with the existing top rail. Check that the post extensions are aligned to the existing posts. Screw them to the posts and rail. Put the top rail over the lattice. Lower the rail and lattice onto the top of the fence panel, engaging the ends of the rail with the posts. Screw the top rail to the posts. 
fix with three screws along the bottom flange of the lattice. Repeat the procedure for the next panel, ensuring that you screw fix adjoining post extensions before you install the lattice. Place the ball cap on top of the posts, then secure with a screw in each side. This completes the installation of the color pins. Now for a few maintenance tips. The beauty of the color fence made from Colorbon steel is in its low maintenance. Just an occasional hose down will keep it looking good for years to come. A few simple precautions will also ensure the longevity of your fence. Avoid spraying the fence with garden sprays, fertilizers, pool water or chemicals. If accidental splashing occurs, hose them off immediately. Ensure the garden beds and mulch remain 50 millimeters clear of the bottom rail. Check that the bottom rails are free to drain and that water flows from the drainage holes at the ends. Minor scratches in the paintwork won't affect the performance of your fence. So if your color fence has a few scratches, it's not necessary to touch up. We know the beauty of color bond steel combined with the strength of color fence, fencing knowledge will ensure the long life of your fence. Why else would we back the system with our 10-year complete fence warranty?